This is a sale switch, and it is the number one reason why RV furnaces stop working. These can be an RV repair tech's dream because they fail all of the time, are super easy to diagnose, and can sometimes be replaced in seconds. So today, I'm gonna show you how to save some major moolah and fix this problem yourself. You got this. So what the heck is this thing? Well, your sales switch lives inside of your furnace. And this is one of the few times in life where the name of the thing actually tells you what it does. The rectangular part acts as a sail to open and close the switch. Go figure. This switch tells the circuit board whether or not the fan is moving enough air to be safe before we start adding propane and fire to the mix. This, along with a couple other safety mechanisms, is what keeps your furnace from turning into a bomb, which is super dope. But less dope is the fact that these things break and get bent all of the time, and all it takes is one clump of dog hair to keep this switch from closing properly. So how can you check if the sale switch is your problem? Well, first you have to locate your furnace, which can be harder than you think. You're looking for a vent outside that looks like this, and hopefully there's an access panel around it that just screws off. Pro tip, use a Robertson or square bit when you're taking those screws out, you'll be much less likely to strip them. I know I'm based in Las Vegas, but let's leave the stripping to the professionals. You got this. If you don't see an access panel, that's when you're gonna need to channel your inner Dora the Explorer and start pulling out some drawers or unscrewing some false walls to find this thing. It's in there somewhere. It didn't grow legs and walk away, I promise you. And that might be the point that you call a tech. Totally fine. You did your best. Once you do get to the front of your furnace, now is when we pull out our multimeter. I use a Klein because I think it makes me look cool and I like playing with the amp clamp. It kind of looks like a mouth. But for this test, you can use a cheap Harbor Freight multimeter if that's what you got. And if just the sight of this thing gives you PTSD from your high school physics class, do not worry. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a shortcut to potentially diagnose this problem using just your ears. So don't run away. But for those of you living your best scientist life, you're gonna set your meter to continuity. It's the symbol that looks like this. And then you're gonna touch your probes together and make a Ghostbuster reference about crossing the streams. And you should hear this really annoying beeping noise. If you don't get a beep, make sure your probes are pushed in all of the way and that you're set to the right setting. Continuity is gonna tell you whether or not this switch is open or closed, or whether or not electricity can go through the switch. Stick with me. First, you're gonna turn your furnace off. Then you're gonna poke one probe on each side of the switch. If the switch is good, you should hear no noise. This means your switch is open and you have no continuity. Your little sales switch is sitting there living her best life, waiting for her Beyonce wind machine moment. If you do get a noise, congratulations, you have a bad sales switch. It's time to switch out that bad boy. I'll tell you about how to do that at this point in the video. If your sales switch is good so far, let's keep going. Now turn your furnace on and repeat the exact same test the exact same way. This time, you do want to hear a noise. This means that the fan is turned on and you've produced enough wind to close the sail switch. So remember, furnace off, you're looking for no noise. Furnace on, you're looking for a noise. If you failed either of these tests, then it's time to change out that sail switch. But pause. If the last minute or so has had you completely lost, if you're like, Emily, I do not get this multimeter crap, have no fear. One, I've got a video coming out soon that's gonna explain multimeters for beginners, so don't give up on yourself yet. I've got you, keep an eye out for that. And I have a shortcut for diagnosing your sales switch using only your ears. Here it is. If your furnace doesn't turn on at all, then you probably have a stuck closed sales switch and you're gonna need to switch that bad boy out. That's all we're testing for in test one. Or if every time you turn on your furnace, it blows for 15 to 30 seconds and then turns off, that is classic stuck open sale switch, and you're gonna need to switch that bad boy out. It's that simple. These are the same shortcuts that an RV repair tech is going to use when they come out to diagnose your furnace. Whenever I hear either of these things from a customer, the first thing I check is the sale switch. Now, just relying on your ears isn't as effective as using the multimeter, obviously. And honestly, 80% of the time these furnaces have problems, it's the damn sale switch. 
Now, to change that sail switch out, simply undo these screws and carefully pull that sucker out. If you see a giant clump of hair or debris on that thing, you can try very carefully taking that off and putting the same switch back in. But for the most part, you're looking at replacing it. Just keep in mind, Dometic uses four different types of these sail switches across all of their models, and Suburban uses nine. So just make sure you're switching it out for the right one. Now stop whatever you're doing and look at me in the eye. We're making a pact right now, a solemn vow. I just helped you out and you're just gonna make me one promise. You are not under any circumstance. None. Gonna try and bend that sail switch arm. That's dangerous. This is a safety mechanism. It's calibrated to the furnace. Don't mess with it. Remember, this is one of the things keeping your furnace from turning into a bomb. And here at RV Repair Woman, we take a hard line stance of no bombs. And that's it. That's how you become your own RV repair tech when it comes to furnaces. If it's not your sales switch, congratulations. You were one of the 20% of people that had a weirder problem with their furnace. And it's time to call a tech. If you're in the Las Vegas area, hit me up. If you're not in the Vegas area, check out the tech locator on the RVTAA to find a certified tech in your area. We're super dope, we know what we're doing, and we'd love to help you out. And if you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments or hit subscribe. I'm a new channel, a new small business. If you wanna join the RV repair woman train, all aboard. Toot toot.